Here are the rehearsals for this week. Today, there is no rehearsal. Tuesday, A session, Maui, Monsters, and Moana. B session, Moana and Ocean. Wednesday, all leads, that's Moana, Maui, Tamatoa, Claus, Grandma Tala, Chief Ancestor, Sina and Tua, with a music review. Thursday, Tui, Sina, Moana, Hey, Hey, Pua, Grandma Tala, Villagers, Where You Are, Choreo. Please remember that Thursday, there is also a mandatory Zoom meeting for all cast parents. Thank you. Crew call this week, tomorrow, Tuesday the 15th. Scenic Designers, Props and Costumes, Room 419. Before the Civil War, educational opportunities for free black children, particularly in higher education, were quite limited, even in the North. Some students, however, managed to leap over the hurdles standing in their way. John Chavis, a free black man from North Carolina, was the first African-American college student. Chavis studied as a private student under the president of the College of New Jersey, now known as Princeton University, and continued his studies at Liberty Hall Academy in Virginia. In 1862, Mary Jane Patterson became the first African-American woman to receive a bachelor's degree when she graduated from Oberlin College. Patterson became a teacher and then the first black principal at the Preparatory School for Negroes, now known as Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. Before the Civil War, discrimination against black students led to the founding of the first black colleges in the North including Wilberforce in Ohio and Lincoln and Cheney Universities in Pennsylvania. Cheney University in Philadelphia is the first historically black college or university. It was founded in 1837 as the Institute of Colored Youth. The founding of that institution transforms educational possibility for African-American people. The era saw huge growth in the number of black colleges and universities, from Howard and Fisk to Hampton, and Tuskegee. Historically, black colleges and universities take African Americans who struggle in our failing public schools and turn them into a rigorous scholar with access to a future who has earned the credentials for a college degree. HBCUs arose as a direct response to racial discrimination, providing opportunities for black students to gain a higher education and enter the middle class. According to the New York Times, HBCUs make up only 3% of the colleges across the country, and yet at least 50% of black doctors and 80% of black judges have graduated from their classes. There remains a significant racial gap in degree attainment, but this gap is shrinking thanks to these black institutions and to increase black enrollment in historically white colleges and universities. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.